Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com. This is episode two of Photoshop for Photographers. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to isolate the background from your subject, or maybe put it a different way, we're going to isolate the subject from their background. Now, this is a popular thing to do for wedding and lifestyle photographers. Many times a wedding photographer will take a picture of the bride and groom, and they're outside and they have a maybe a busy background and it's going to detract a little bit from the bride and groom and they want to put a little more emphasis on the bride and groom so what they'll do is they'll isolate the background from the bride and groom and then they'll they'll either make the background darker or they'll t suck some of the color out of the background and i'm going to show you how to do that in this image now i don't have any model released images of a bride and groom but I do have a picture of my son Joe so he'll have to suffice and this is commonly done too with senior portraits and other types of lifestyle shots so uh, doing it on uh, doing this method on my son Joe's image here will work just fine now one thing I should add is and I should have talked about it in episode one in Photoshop in general there's many ways to achieve the same thing uh, you could do this many different ways. So I'm just going to show you one way. And um, in my opinion, it's one of the best ways to do it. Uh, there might be other people that have different opinions of better ways to do it. It really comes down to personal preference. So what we're going to do first is we're going to do a selection of my son, Joe. And to do that, I'm going to use the quick selection tool. The W key on your keyboard is the keyboard shortcut to the quick selection tool it's up here the fourth tool from the top and you can see there's two 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 tools in this little cubby hole the quick selection tool and the magic wand tool make sure you're on the quick selection tool and we want to um, take make a selection of joe himself and to get a bigger brush you could hit the right bracket key and a smaller brush the left bracket key or you could use the center click wheel on your mouse if it's so equipped and what we're going to do we're just going to draw on joe um, real quick and do a selection of him now if you make a mistake don't worry we're going to refine the selection we're going to improve the selection in a second so get his ear over here okay i have this I'll call it a rough selection of Joe. And you can see he's got some fly away here, here, here. Now, another thing I should add, if you have a model and they have long hair and their hair is just flying in the wind and the background is really busy, uh, don't even try to do this. I get, I get um, a lot of emails from folks where they say they need to change the background on a subject. And they have a person with um, just fly away hair standing in front of a wall of vines and they you know wondered how they could replace the background well it's really difficult um you know photoshop is powerful but it's not magical so you really have to be um, smart when you take the picture when you're capturing the scene in camera if you intend on doing something like this you have to make sure that the background isn't so busy that it's going to interfere with your selection later or that your model's hair is so maybe fly away that it might give you a problem with the selection later now Joe's hair is a little bit fly away but we we could deal with this I think so what we're gonna do we did this selection now um, let's just improve it around his shirt right there just a little bit okay now we're gonna refine the selection uh, around his hair so we're gonna go up here to this little button refine edge we're gonna click on that and we get this dialog box and you can see the background turn black we could change the view of the background right here by clicking here so we have overlay and all these different um, on white black and white things like that I'm just gonna leave it on black for now and what we do want we want the edge detection brush right here we want to use this and I'm gonna get a larger brush I'm gonna hit the right bracket key again you have a mouse with the center uh, click wheel you could do that and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paint around the edge of his hair and try to get some of these flyaway hairs um, with this brush. And what this brush does, you're basically telling Photoshop that you want Photoshop to take another look around this edge and see if it could do a little better job with the selection of this area here. So we're just going to go like that and like that 
All right, now we have the selection. It looks a little ghosty up in here, but we'll see if we could improve it. Now, all these sliders here, I wish I could tell you there's a formula to always put the radius at like three pixels and smooth it this much and that, but it's really different for every image. So what I suggest you do is just try some different things. Typically with this radius slider, personally, I don't move it way up. A lot of people do move it way up. Um, I found that uh, my selections tend to be better if I'm a little bit uh, less robust with this slider. Sometimes smart radius, I'll click it, see what the change is, and if it doesn't do anything that I like, I'll just leave it off. Um, I often will smooth the edge just a little bit, and I will feather the edges sometimes just a little bit. Specifically, to when you have a background like I had, which was the city in the background, um, you could get away with feathering a little bit. It helps everything blend in a little better. Um, contrast, on some images, contrast will help quite a bit. On other images, it doesn't seem to do anything. Uh, shift edge, I don't think I need to do on this image, but sometimes you will need to do the shift the edge, the actual selection edge in or out to help get a better look. Um, Decontaminate colors sometimes will work when the uh, background color is bleeding over onto your subject, but in this case, I don't think we need to do that. Um, so right now, it's it's okay. I mean, it does look kind of rough when we're looking against this black background, but once we have the city uh, behind him again, I don't think there's an issue there. And we actually could view that right here. As you could see, the selection looks okay. So. Uh, we'll put it back on black just for the sake of argument. And we're going to output this to a new layer with a layer mask. All right, so we're going to click OK. Now what you're going to see is a new layer is going to form over here on my layers palette. And it has a mask. And you can see right now the mask is masking out the background. And it did OK. We have, you know, the hair looks OK. So it does look pretty good. Now what we want to do now is we really want to do some processing to the background. I want to take some of the color out of it and make it a little darker. So I'm going to go on that layer. So I'm going to click down here to this background layer, and I'm going to turn it on by hitting this little eyeball right there to turn it on. So we're now, everything we do now will be applied to this background layer, layer because I have this active. And what we want to do is we want to go up here to Hue and Saturation. This is an adjustment layer. Now I'm going to click that, and we have some sliders pretty much right here. Is I want to bring saturation down. Now watch, I'll bring saturation all the way down. You can see how it made the background black and white, but it left Joe alone. That's because we have Joe on his own layer, so we don't, we're not affecting him with this adjustment. So we're sucking some of the color out, and we're going to make it a little darker. Not, not so dark that it looks contrived just a little darker and a little less colorful just like that and that's it now this is the before and there's the after you can see it's a real subtle effect but it helps your subject jump out a little better and as i mentioned there's a lot of lifestyle photographers wedding photographers that do this quite often in their portraiture so that's it for episode two it kind of is a quick episode of how you could do things with layers and do things with selections uh, so there's a couple different uh, things in this episode uh, techniques in this episode that i hope help you process your images with photoshop all right that's it for this episode. I appreciate everyone watching my videos. Thank you very, very much. I'll talk to you guys soon.